Have you ever accidentally bought a knife that was identical to another knife in your collection and then realized it later? How's it going, everybody? I'm Rochambeau, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And if you answered yes to that question, I'm going to need you to go down to the comments section and let us know which knife it was. Here's the good news. You're not alone because I have a friend who bought this knife and then realized once it got there that it was exactly the same as another knife in their collection. Same color, same specs, same knife. He promptly sold it to another friend who promptly lent it to me so that I could check it out. I've never reviewed a Benchmade knife on this channel. I've held them before. I've checked them out personally before, but I've never bought one and I've never reviewed one. So I've been holding on to this for the last week or so so that I could go direct to grail or garbage to give you the goods, give you the context that you need to determine if a knife like this deserves a spot in your EDC rotation or even in your display case. Here's how it works. Grail or garbage consists of five categories. Those categories are materials, ergonomics, fidget factor, the lock, and then finally fit and finish. Each of those categories is worth a max of 10 points. And by the time we're done ranking them categorically, we'll do a tiny bit of math, add up the scores and place it on our leaderboard, which looks a little bit like this. Once we do, we'll finally know. Is the Benchmade Adamas a grail or is it garbage? They say there's no time like the present, so let's go ahead and not only rank, but also review this Benchmade Adamas. Now, it is important that we mention that this is the second iteration of the Adamas. There was an original that came out many, many years ago, and that one had D2 blade steel. Since then, they have made some changes, and let's talk a little bit about that before we get going. One of the first changes is they improve the cutting geometry. So while this is still a thick knife behind the spine, it is a bit slimmer than it was. It's still a very robust spine all the way up to the tip, um, but it is much slimmer than the old model. The second change is they, they went from D2 tool steel to this version, which has CPM crew wear. CPM crew wear is a massive upgrade. It's very well rounded in almost every aspect, but it is not stainless. They do make up for that with this tungsten coating, and I did try to find more information on it, but when you go to the retail websites, it just says, gray it achieves that and it does help with the rust resistance furthermore they added on this pocket clip and this is where i really think that spider co could learn a thing or two this pocket clip is great as far as stamped pocket clips go for us spider co fanboys we usually have to pay extra for this kind of action so it's nice to see that for this benchmade adamas you don't have to and that pocket clip is ambidextrous as well uh, that's going to do it for the changes for now. It's still an axis lock. You can get this in, in an automatic version as well, uh, but this is not. And for the purpose of ranking, I'm only ranking this manual axis lock version. So without further ado, let's talk about the first category. The first category is materials. Now for the materials, we have steel liners, stamped steel pocket clip, phosphor bronze washers, G10 handle scales, and of course, CPM crew wear. So all in all, in a vacuum, those materials are rather good. The theme of this knife is a user knife. I feel like it appeals to the military and I'm not necessarily surprised by that, but at the end of the day, G10 and crew wear are the two main materials that we need to focus on here. Those materials are pretty good in and of their own right. However, when you consider the price tag, and here's the thing, another popular YouTube channel did a video on this about, um, well, geez, it's been about two years now since this newer model came out. And he said that this was going for around 236. Try as I might, I looked online and you could only really get the 
mini Adamus for around that price range. Right now, Benchmade is selling these on their website for over 300 bucks. And even if you go to Blade HQ, you're gonna be looking at a price tag of about 296. So for that price, and to give you context, with the same materials, I ranked the Crewware Spyderco Paramilitary 2, which is also running on Phosphor Bronze Washers, is also known to be a workhorse, also has G10 and also has Crewware. I ranked that a seven for materials and that price tag was around the $200 price range. So maybe it's just my opinion, but I cannot give this a higher score than the PM2 given that materials are weighed against the cost. And in this case, the cost is, well, $296. And for those reasons, I'm going to be giving it a six out of 10 for materials. Now, the second category is ergonomics. How does it feel in the hand? Are there any hot spots? Does it make sense? Can you switch up your grip? And yeah, absolutely. As far as hot spots are concerned, this is a rough and tumble kind of knife, but there really are no hot spots to think of. Um, it feels like it could be comfortable with a glove or without a glove, which is great considering that for hard use case scenarios, many people will be wearing gloves. Similar to the Spyderco Manix 2, you do have some extra jimping on the inside of these handle scales for a firmer grip, but unlike the Manix 2, that jimping is not super uncomfortable, at least to my hand. And that's great. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the jimping on the shadow box steel liners is not sticking out further than the jimping on the scales. In fact, it's flush and it's very well rounded off, meaning that you're gonna get a nice and confident grip here. Also, there is jimping a tiny bit on the blade itself and a bit more on the back of the handle scales. That's actually rather comfortable. However, you can't really push it past that apex uh, without running out of jimping, which honestly I think is fine. This is a big knife, and with this regular saber style grip, it's going to do just fine. Uh, with that being said, the jimping goes all the way back to the back here, and so again, you will have a very firm grip on this knife, and you can tell that the theme here, the overwhelming theme, is that it, this is a user knife. This is not a knife to sit in a display case. This is a knife that's been that's meant to be used, and the ergonomics definitely feel that way. It's not telling you where to place your fingers or anything like that. You know, make up your own mind, but there really is only one grip for this, and that is a saber grip. You could, of course, fist it. Uh, you could have also do a reverse grip and it will work just fine in this as well. So it's really up to you how you grip this knife, but the good news is, is that it's not gonna be bad either way. The extra jimping isn't a detractor, but it also doesn't add to the overall feel of the handle scales or anything like that. And as far as the clip is concerned, it's there and you feel it, but it's not super uncomfortable. For all those reasons, it's going to be getting a seven out of 10 for ergonomics. Now we gotta talk about my favorite category, which is fidget factor, but it doesn't really necessarily do any favors to this knife. So a lot of people are mistaken when they think that fidget factor is only about playing with the knife. Fidget factor incorporates a lot of things. It incorporates things like detent, it incorporates things like the pivot, and also the lock. All of those things play a role, and even if you don't play with your knives, they are still important. And so that's one of the reasons why I love fidget factors, because it's such a versatile category. Well, how versatile is the fidget factor on this knife? Well, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. The detent is highly lacking. Um, it's a very light axis lock, which means that there is almost no detent to speak of. So if you like to reverse flick, it's, uh, it's not gonna happen. Uh, you have to, to get this to deploy and shut with one hand, you definitely need a bit of wrist movement in there, at least as of right now. Now keep in mind, this knife has not been heavily used. In fact, by the time it came into my possession for review, it hadn't been used at all. And so what that means is that the phosphor bronze washers have not had a chance to really polish themselves out. But it also means that when I go and release the lock, the blade does not move. There is no feedback from releasing the lock. And that is something that I'm not a huge fan of. However, once you do get the blade swinging, those phosphor bronze washers feel really smooth. It, it's very hydraulic is the word that most people would use in this scenario. Um, so that is actually kind of nice. The thumb studs, they do work, um, but they're not super impressive. Again, 
a lot of that has to do with the fact that there is virtually zero detent. Even for a crossbar style lock, there is no detent. Uh, so here's the thing. Is it enjoyable? Is it easy to flick in and out? Is it comfortable? Yes. Um, I'm a little disappointed on the detent side of things because even my $50 Best Heckman Ronin, which also has a crossbar style lock, has a bit more detent and is much more fidget friendly. But that's not what this knife was about. This knife is not for play. It's a serious knife. This knife is meant for work. You got to go to work. You got to chop down some trees and baton your stuff. And okay, maybe don't do that last part, but I digress. With all of that being said about the fidget, um, one more thing I want to touch on. It is a single-sided captive pivot. Hallelujah. They got that right. And the lock is rather easy to engage, which means that if you do decide to fidget with this and find out if you can polish out those washers for more of a drop shut type configuration, it's not going to be too difficult or uncomfortable. And for all of those reasons, it's going to be getting a 7 out of 10 for fidget factor. Um, it, it's good. It has a lot to do with the feel of the action and less to do with the playing with it type situation. Remember, this is serious. Don't play with it. Next up, let's talk about this lock. And what more can I say? Look, the Axis lock has been reviewed, 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 and reviewed. But we're not here to review it. We're here to rank it. And I have felt a couple different crossbar style locks at this time. Benchmade used to be extremely popular primarily for the Axis lock. And, you know, also being an American-made company. Uh, the Axis lock is easy to engage. In fact, I don't even need two fingers. Unlike my best Techman Ronin, which you do need two fingers to release it, you can do that with one. And a lot of people are actually afraid of this lock because you hear about the boogeyman in the Omega Springs. And some people say that every single Axis lock they've ever had is broken on them with the Omega Springs are garbage and blah. And other people say that they've had 50 Benchmades and none of them have ever broken an Omega Spring. Whether you're in one camp or the other, the Axis Lock is a generational knife lock style, and ever since the patent got released on it, it's been highly copied for a reason, and that is because it is quite a good lock. There is no blade play left, right, up, down, and there is no double clutch on here. I almost kind of wish there were, because then at least that would point to a detent that is lacking. <laughs> but you got to give it some credit. The Axis Lock is where it all started, and they did a phenomenal job with that. Unlike the Ronin, again, it's very easy to actuate, and you can do so with one hand. And that makes it ambidextrous, because you can switch the pocket clip to the other side, and even if you're left-handed, you could still actuate that lock. And there is absolutely no difference, which means that this is you know left-hand friendly, even on the lock side. So I have to give the lock a better score uh, than I normally would, and that is because I actually do like the Axis Lock. On this one, the Omega Spring is kind of mushy. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it is going to be easy for a lot of people to use, and easy to actuate, and generally a nice strong lockup. Feel free to put in the comments section down below if you have any horror stories involving Omega Springs and Axis Locks, because I definitely want to know about them. In this case, however, the lock is going to be getting an 8 out of 10. And finally, let's talk about the fit and finish. And if you thought that fit and finish was only about how well manufactured it was, you would be wrong. And while manufacturing definitely plays a role, it's also about the design. How well realized is the design? Did they achieve what they set out to achieve? And how well did they achieve it? Could they have done anything differently? Could they have done anything better? And you know, to the last point, the answer is always yes. We can always move up, we can always move forward. However, I get the distinct impression, once again, that this knife was meant to be a heavy user. A lot of heavy user knives have this tendency to be overbuilt and unusable for most tasks, except for the hardest tasks. And in this case, I don't believe that that's actually the case. Uh, this. With the, the new renovations, and I say new, but you know this model has been out for two years now. But with the, the most recent updates to this knife, with you know better cutting geometry and better blade steel, like way better blade steel, I can't help but you know give them a nod because I think that this actually really, really came out well for what they intended it for. This is a no-nonsense type of knife, and they really, really accomplished that. 
I love the blade shape with this subtle drop point blade with this nice up sweep over over here. It allows for a nice saber grip like I already mentioned. I like the fact that the jimping is congruent from the liners to the G10 handle scales. And I also like that they reduce the weight with these holes through there. And, you know, in case you didn't know, this is going to be weighing somewhere in the realm of six ounces. So for all of you who won't carry a knife over four ounces, this probably isn't for you. However, in a hard use case scenario, the best knives for those jobs are often going to weigh more than four ounces. And this one definitely does. Uh, it does have a hole for a lanyard if that's your thing. I don't really feel like this knife needs it because you have more than enough real estate for your your mittens. And it does have a fuller, which also helps reduce on the weight. I do wish that that fuller was a little bit higher so that it was a little bit accessible. But in this case, it, it's, in my opinion, just a, a tiny bit of weight reduction. I also like the fact that they made the thumb studs black because it has a nice contrast between the blade and the handle scales and it matches uh, while not matching. You do see the knife through the handle scales as well and that offers a nice design contrast. I like that they made the pocket clip reversible. I like the fact that it's a single sided pivot. Is it all good? Uh, no, I, I don't mind the Benchmade logo. The Benchmade logo is one of those iconic things in the knife world. So I feel like it, you know, it's earned its spot on the blade. But as far as CPM crew wear and Siebert, I, I don't know necessarily if, you know, we really needed that there because yes, we get it. It's, it's an iconic design. Um, uh, that extra billboarding is unnecessary in my opinion. I like that it's easy to actuate, but not at the expense of the feel of it and the feel of the action. I feel like they could have improved the overall deployment action on this knife had they built this Omega Spring to have a little bit more tension. And they can absolutely do that, but in this case, they just didn't. Um, you can get thicker gauge Omega Springs that would 100% do that. And it is something that if you buy this knife, I kind of suggest that you do. You don't have to do it by all means, but if you want a bit better feeling action, it is something to consider. All in all, they achieved what they set out to achieve. And this is going to appeal to a specific crowd of people that want a workhorse of a knife and are willing to pay extra for the Benchmade name. You do pay extra for the fact that it's built in the US, but you know what? One of their biggest competitors, Spyderco, is also made in the US and they managed to achieve a workhorse of a knife with same materials uh, for a lot less money. So take that and do with it what you will, but it does actually affect my overall ranking at the end of the day. I've been beating around the bush, but let's go ahead and get to it. For fit and finish, we're going to be ranking it an eight out of 10. They did a phenomenal job of realizing the design language on this knife and really cornering who this knife was for. And so it will get a higher score for that. Now that we've gone through all five categories, it's time that we add up the scores and give it a total. And then we're gonna place it on our leaderboard. So here we are. For materials, it got a six. For ergonomics, a seven. For fidget factor, a seven. The lock is an eight. And fit and finish is also an eight. When you add up all of those scores, it comes out to a 36 out of 50. Now, 36 out of 50 is not a grail. And I'll repeat, this is not a grail. But not every knife has to be a grail. This is on the lower end of a high recommend, but it is still a high recommend. Who would I highly recommend it to? 100% if you want a good user knife, a knife that is not likely to let you down, that is a no-nonsense type of knife with an innovative type of lock, which is iconic, by a company that is American-made with decent materials, this is your jam. Again, the materials aren't bad, they just got a lower ranking because it costs a lot. But the people that want to buy this knife are okay paying that price because at the end of the day, they can feel good when they look at that butterfly logo on the blade. But what do you think? Do you have a Benchmade Adamas? Do you like it? Do you have the new version? Do you have the old version? Let me know in the comments section down below. Did I rank it too high? Did I rank it too low? Whether you agree or not, I definitely want to hear about it. Guys, if you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boohoo, there's a button for you too. And if you want to see more Grail or Garbage rankings where we continue to pile them on our leaderboard, 
make sure you hit subscribe. I'm Will Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.